Hard to know what to do with all that hair. Oh, right. Sunday, the 14th of March. And just got back from services. I actually wore a sport jacket. as a little cold walking. Total of four and a half miles of walking between walking up here to Bernadette's from my home and back to the church and then back to here. I had a long confession. <laughs> Threatened to go to St. Dominic's and then all of a sudden your priest gives you a lot of attention. Had a long uh, discussion with him and he, he simply didn't get it. You know, they consider masturbation a, a sin, you know, uh, having a few beers and all of these things. Uh, I, I'm just, I'm not going to go Etonian again. I'll quit it before I, before I embrace things I don't believe in. And the biggest thing was my expression of my rage and feelings to my family who have decided jointly to cut off my money. And... Uh, <laughs> he didn't get it that this is a 50-year thing situation with older, bigger, stronger brothers uh, who weren't very nice when uh, we were in the family together and aren't, aren't behaving very nice now. I simply quoted the verse that, that he who refuses to help his own family, his relatives, is worse than an unbeliever. I said, what about that? <laughs> I said, what about when Paul handed the man over for the rebuking of his flesh to Satan because he was doing dead wrong? Or what about when the apostles were set out? What were they supposed to do when they weren't accepted? Shake the dust from their bodies and move on, not make some sacrifice. He wanted me to, to continue praying, which I will, but I'm not making a, sac a sacrament of, or a gift of concession to them. I don't see that happening anywhere in the Bible. I know a woman who got raped, uh, 16 years old from England, raped, raped while she was a virgin for Jesus. And I don't think it would be prudent to tell that, that woman that, that she's to find a rapist and then give him a sacrifice of love, you know, buy him a bottle of whiskey and a condom. I, I don't think it works that way. Uh, I said, well, what about my righteous indignation, indignation to the priest? What about my rage? rage my rage is involuntary. No, no real answers. So I'm very uh, discouraged, you know, and um, I want the, the one thing that I have sworn not to do is not to go back to the Wetonian where you just believe everything you hear and, oh, I'm a terrible person, I'm a sinner. I challenged him about calling me a sinner, and he apologized to me. He, he said he was wrong. I told him the story I told him about praying with a cab driver and the babies, and she thought her husband had AIDS, and just a desperate situation. And he, he, just, he called me a sinner. And now, three weeks later, Staring in his eyes, uh, confrontation, he apologized and said he couldn't understand why he would have done that. Well, yeah, and I, I don't understand why you're telling me not to hold fast. And if, you know, you do apologize and do a sacrament, then, then you're just not acknowledging reality. And that's what I did at Wheaton a whole lot. So thanks for listening, Trent. Bye.